This video is sponsored by ClickUp. Okay, so here's the game. It involves two players and a row of 10 squares. What we're gonna do is take turns filling in these blank boxes one at a time with either the letter O or S. You get to choose, and player one, of course, goes first. The game is over when SOS is spelled out in three consecutive squares, and whoever played that last letter to spell SOS is the winner. So to start the game, player one could put an S here, then player two could put an O maybe over here. They didn't have to play an O, they could have played an S there or in any other blank spot, but we'll stick to this. Player one could put another S over here on the right. And then let's have player two put an S here, even though it's a bad move. Because now player one can put an O right in between and boom, SOS is spelled and player one is the winner because they played that last letter to spell SOS. Colors do not matter in this game. I'm just putting different colors so we can keep track of who played what, but I didn't have to do that. SOS just has to be spelled out. If no one spells SOS, then it's a tie. So that's the idea behind the game. But the actual question or proof we're going to do comes from the 1999 Math Olympiad. It states, two players play a game on a line of 2,000 squares. So a little more than the 10 we see here. Each player in turn puts either an S or O into an empty square. The game stops when three adjacent squares contain SOS in that order and the last player wins. If all the squares are filled without getting SOS, then the game is drawn. So same as we just saw. But we need to show that the second player can always win. See, I love problems like this because pretty much anyone can understand it and also make an attempt. Like, there's no advanced math that we're going to see here. And the solution isn't that difficult. Like, it wouldn't take that long to go through it. So what I decided to do instead is go through my thought process and how I attempted this problem before seeing the solution. Now, was my attempt kind of excessive? Probably. But would I get full credit? Probably not. But I just wanted to show kind of how I would attempt this problem. For those who just want to see the solution, I'll put it on the screen real quick in three, two, one, now. And it's gone. As for the rest of you, give it some thought. I'll put it on the screen at the end of the video as well. But real quick, I'm going to thank the sponsor of this video, ClickUp. ClickUp is a productivity and work management platform designed to save you time on just about anything, whether it be an upcoming school assignment to a large team project at work. With ClickUp, you can do things like set goals and keep track of progress. You can create dashboards that give you a visual breakdown of everything that needs to be completed for an upcoming project. You can create calendars, share documents, tasks, ideas, and plenty more all in one place, whether you're a team of one or a team of a thousand. And what's great about this platform is how customizable everything is while still being user friendly. So you can organize your workflow and even your teams however you'd like, no coding or complicated setup required. Even just as someone who makes videos on YouTube, ClickUp is extremely useful for organizing video schedules, working with sponsors, managing payments, and plenty more, because everything I need can always be found in one place. So whether you're in sales, project management, engineering, marketing, HR, or you're just in school, ClickUp is a great, easy-to-use solution that creates a more efficient work environment. And to get started now, use the code ZACKSTAR to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for a year, meaning you can start reclaiming your time for under $5 per month. All right, now let's get back to the video. So the first thing I did was simplify the game from 2,000 squares to just three. I wanted to see in the simplest case, or cases as we move up, if either player could force a win or whether it would be a guaranteed tie. And by the way, we will be assuming both players are playing optimally, so no one is going to make a, quote, stupid mistake. The first thing I saw is that, well, if we're trying to win, ideally, then it's got to spell SOS just like this. If I put an O in the first spot, then nobody can win. So that aspect is in my control as player one. Then the next player is playing optimally, so they're not going to put like an O in the middle and let you win, of course. They'll put maybe an S and boom, it's going to be a tie. So no, in this case, I cannot win if the other player is playing optimally. They can always guaranteed make it a tie. And obviously, player two has no winning strategy here either. So a three squares, guaranteed tie. Now let's move on to four squares where I started seeing more. The first thing I saw was symmetry. 
because I'm actually thinking as player one right now, and I'm going to play around with first moves, but by analyzing like this tile as the first move, I don't need to analyze this one because it's going to lead to the same outcomes. So I put an S in the first spot and realized all player two had to do was put an O right here, and thus no matter what player one does, it's still going to be a tie. Again, assuming optimal play. So they might put an O here, and the game is over. It's another tie. Then I don't need to show it, but if player one had started anywhere else with either an S or an O, well, it's still going to result in a tie. So at the moment, I have not found a winning strategy for either player. And I couldn't tell how long this was going to go on for. So I knew I might need a different approach, which is exactly what I did when analyzing the same game with five squares. Now the first thing that happened here was actually by accident. I had player one put an S in the first square, and player two just puts an S right next to it. Not exactly obvious what a next best move is yet, so I was just playing around with things. My next move was for player one to put an S over on the other side, and then I noticed something. The game is over, and player one has won. Well, not yet, but no matter what player two does next, they lose. If they put an S in spot four, then boom, player one puts an O here and spells SOS and it's game over, player one is won. Had they put an O instead, then they're still gonna lose. And the same goes for the other blank square. So we found a winning game for one of the players, but we need a guaranteed win, right? And like I said, we may not have been playing optimally for player two. They went in spot two before, but what if it was better to put maybe an O in spot three? Because now the game is going to end in a tie. You can try all the different possible games, which I did not want to do, but no player can guaranteed win this game. So I still haven't found a winning strategy for either player, but I did finally notice something sort of useful. And that is in order to win, you have to spell SOS here, here, or here. That's it. There are only three chances to spell SOS. If I start with an O in the first spot, I have ruined that first opportunity for an SOS. If the next person puts an S like in the middle, that ruins the middle SOS. So now there's only one three block section left. And if the next person ruins that, it's over. The game cannot have a winner since you blew your only three chances. So I started looking at those three sections separately. Like, all right, we got these three tiles, these three tiles, and these three tiles. But there's overlap, right? I mean, look at it again. This middle square in the first section is the same as the left tile in the second section. They both represent the actual second tile here on the left, which is the second of these three, but the first of these three. That's why they're going to be linked. Well, not even. They're simply the same square written twice. And here are the other links showing which squares are in fact the same. Notice, by the way, that these three squares on the right are all the exact same. They represent that middle tile, which is part of this group, this group, and this group. So it appears in all three rows in the representation on the right. So if player one starts in the middle square with an S, we'd write that S three times on the right like this. That's all this is, two representations of the same thing. If the next person puts an O here, then it's going to be written over on the right like this, and this would just continue. And now in order to win, you just need one of these three rows to spell SOS. And this is what helped me do something I should have done earlier, honestly, but it helped me look for what you have to make the other player do in order for you to win on the next move. So I realized, well, in order to win, one of these three sections must be filled out with one letter in the right spot. Not two, has to be one. Then the other player must play another correct letter in that same row. That leaves you with a win on the next move, a way to spell SOS. And that's the only way to win. They have to provide that second correctly placed letter. The problem is, they never do that on purpose. They're playing optimally. If we have an S in the first spot, then they might put an O at the end, and boom, we're not getting SOS spelled on that top row. But remember, these rows are linked. So in this case, by putting an O in the wrong spot in that first row, 
you automatically place the O in the right spot in the second row. As in the second row still has potential to spell SOS. The others don't now. So not a win right now, but if there was already an S in this spot before, then I would win because they gave me that O in the second row, which allows me to complete SOS. So initially you need both of these squares to have an S. And then if that last square is filled in, whoever is forced to play in the remaining two is going to lose. No matter what they do, they're going to provide a correct letter in one of those rows for the other person to complete and win. And then I made the connection that this setup matches this here, what we saw before. Just two S's separated by two blank spots. This setup is the key to our problem. Because if at any point in the game there are two S's separated by two blanks, someone is going to lose. And that will be whoever is eventually forced to play in between them. In fact, that's the only way someone is guaranteed to lose in at least two more moves. Like you could separate two S's by three blanks, but this is not a situation where the game is over in two moves, which is all we care about. It'll be over in three after player one does this. Now we're just back to that same configuration from before. I didn't have a rigorous proof of this other than proof by looking and noticing symmetry, but this game can be boiled down to simply just don't put anything between two S's that are separated by two blanks. Follow this rule while not making stupid mistakes and you win. But the thing is, you might have to go against this rule causing you to lose. So now putting it all together, we just need to figure out whether the S blank blank S setup can be made and then who will be forced to play in one of those blanks. Now going back to the original question with 2000 blocks, all we need to figure out is one, can someone definitely make that S blank blank S setup and two, who will be forced to put something in one of those blanks eventually. Well, look, if player one goes here, then player two here, player one can then try to block player two from creating that little setup, but it won't work. We'll just put an S over here, and now somebody is going to lose. If we keep playing with this many tiles, you'll notice that several of those S blank blank S configurations can be made, but the blanks always come in pairs. And because, in this case, player one always plays to a board with an even number of blank squares, they will be the one who has to play that losing move, meaning player two has a winning strategy. So it did have to do with parity. If the total number of squares is even and greater than 15, that's one to think about on your own, then player two will win. But here's the solution given on the website, and that does it for this video. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon, social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.